the people that do know their God, the preachers that do know their God, the apostles that do know their God. Are we together? The realm of the spirit has a very clear, unambiguous understanding of everyone's level of the knowledge of God. Because you see, the Bible tells us God is many things like you'll be learning shortly. I hope we're working together. It says God is light. That means every time you encounter God, how they know in the spirit is that your illumination increases. When Jesus transfigured, he showed us his spirit man. The brightness of light. So every time I encounter God, you grow in the spirit, not just by measuring chronological age. Your growth in the spirit is measured by the depth of light that is emitted from your spirit man, which is a product of the depth of your encounter with God. This is even how you can know the ranking of angels by the lights that they emit which is a product of how many times they have the privilege of encountering God themselves. Is someone learning? So, when I encounter God as a man of God, there is a level of light, weight, and stature that I command in the spirit. That translates to the level of empowerment that rests upon my life. Let's talk a bit about knowing God. This is where I'll wrap up for tonight. Are you learning? <laughs> now the truth is that according to Isaiah 40 and verse 28, the Bible lets us know that God is limited and God is infinite. When we talk about the subject of knowing God, it said, has thou not known, has thou not heard, the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth. Watch this. He fainted not, neither is he weary then he says there is no searching of his understanding you know what that means in our quest to know god even through eternity we will never exhaust him so he's already given you an information from the start that as you seek to know god prepare to make it an eternal journey there is no arrival that you will never get to a point where you can quantize all of God and say this is God that was a mistake of Lucifer he thought that all of God that he saw was all that there was to God and he said if this is all that God has then I can be God I can exalt myself like the most high only for him to find out that there are many dimensions in God that he did not know are we together now the songwriter says the more I know you the more I want to know you how true when you encounter God, you will see that there are many layers to God now. So have this at the back of your mind. The second thing I want you to know, which is very important, is one of the major reasons why God is unfathomable is because of three attributes of God that he did not share with man. When the Bible calls us partakers of his divine nature, it is not every part of his divine nature we got. There are aspects of his divine nature that he did not share with man. Number one, his omnipresence. He did not share it with man. Man does not have omnipresence. Number two, his omnipotence. The ability to be all powerful. Man is not all powerful. We are not almighty. Our power is derived from our union with him. Outside of our union with him, we do not have power. Are we together? And then man is omnipresent not omnipresent not omnipotent not omniscient all-knowing paul already educated us that we see in part and we prophesy in part that means the best of us is still limited in understanding it is because of these three attributes these are the attributes that brands god in a class all by himself this one he did not share with man omnipresence omnipotence and omniscience is someone learning now so as we explore God we are limited because we are not omnipresent we are not omnipotent we are not omniscient but then the Lord gives us an opportunity to be able to discover layers layers of the knowledge of him so as far as our work on earth is concerned there are three dimensions to knowing God 
and this is what I want to give you tonight I believe that this is one of the things that Dr. David Ogwele was attempting to bring yesterday if you understand these three dimensions you will know God rich enough to be a sign and a wonder on earth not rich enough to exhaust your passion for God but rich enough to be a believer with the command of power and stature indeed are we together I receive I manifest your power and your wisdom till the nations see Jesus lifted up you are exalted I receive I manifest your power and your wisdom till the nations see Jesus lifted up glorify I receive I manifest your power and your wisdom till my nation see Jesus lifted up exalted I receive I manifest your power and your wisdom till the nations see Jesus lifted up this song for someone will be your testimony it will become the anthem of your life that when men see you they will truly see the manifestation of the glory of God they will marvel and say can God make this kind of a man can God make this kind of a pastor can God make this kind of a prophet from what breed have you come these are men who have been forged out of the furnace of affliction men of power and men of might that men will look at you and you look like you are God upon the earth you will tame life like an animal because you have sustained power in the spirit he said leave me for the day breaketh and he said I will not let you go I will not let you go unless you bless me and say what is your name he said I am Jacob he said thou shalt no longer be called Jacob but Israel for as a prince you have had power with God and you have prevailed he touched the whole of his thigh and blessed him the Bible says the sun arose and he called the place Peniel for I have seen God face to face There are people who will rise from this conference tonight this night you are seated but you don't know what is already happening in your spirit man my goodness there are prophets that will rise there are deborahs that will rise there are catering coolmans that will rise it is time to not just talk about history that your altars in Asaba will be burning fire flames of fire flames of fire you go to church on Sunday and no devil can stand it's not just by acting and playing games you have become custodians of the things of the spirit God can trust you with the destinies of men you have access authority in the spirit receive manifest his power his wisdom receive manifest his power his wisdom listen can I tell you many people talk about wealth and prosperity and this is one of the things that has distracted people from loving Jesus you have not experienced prosperity yet until you walk this path with the spirit you will lay up gold as dust and it will be as if you went to meet a herbalist you believe me most of the people who move around is because they do not know God when God walks with you when he is done with you look at what he did with Solomon 
sit down let me give you this we have to wrap up i want you to write like your destiny depends on it is it possible to know god yes god again in the quest to make us know him because knowing him is connected to our accessing power is connected to our faith working is connected to our doing exploits in our world there are three dimensions to knowing god and this will wrap up my teaching tonight are you ready the first dimension in your quest to know god is that you must understand and know his nature and his character this is the first dimension whilst god is infinite there is no searching of the vastness of his person he has fragmented himself into three principal dimensions for our learning that every believer in this side of god's kingdom who desires to know god he's taking away the vagueness you can methodically he says let him that glory at glory in this that he understandeth and knoweth me man can know god the first dimension to the knowledge of god is the knowledge of his nature and his character please write the bible is filled with experiences where god revealed his character in exodus chapter 33 18 and 19 we have to be fast about this exodus 33 18 and 19 hallelujah it was moses who prayed a very sincere prayer in the previous chapters before 18 he said show me your way then when we get to verse 18 he says i beseech thee show me your glory how did god answer that prayer verse 19 he says i will make my goodness everybody say goodness the goodness of god is an aspect of his glory do you know that this was the formula that was given to the nation of israel that every time their enemies came and it was sure that defeat was imminent there was a chant that they made in the spirit you are good and your mercy endures forever they invoked his goodness and its mercy and it's like two ingredients that when it lands upon the earth victory must come even to the undeserving the goodness of god In Isaiah chapter 40, 28 to 30, Isaiah 40, 28 to 30, hast thou not known, hast thou not heard the everlasting God? Watch this now, the creator of the ends of the earth, he fainted not. This is, is giving you an understanding of the character of God. He is not weary. These things that are common with men do not happen with God. There is no such of his understanding. 29, he giveth power to the faint and to them that have no might, he increaseth strength. 30. Even the youth shall faint and be weary, and the young men shall utterly fall. 31. Let's try 30, the next verse. But they that wait upon the Lord, they shall renew their strength. Are you seeing now? God gives strength to people who are weary because he himself does not get weary. These are the things you need to know about God. The nature of God. The attributes of God. I think one of the most concise descriptions of God's nature was as revealed by the psalmist. When you read the entire text of Psalm 103, it is a profound revelation. The most concise capture of the various attributes of God. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. Verse 2. Let's run. And forget not his benefits and he lists six of those benefits number one verse three who forgiveth your iniquity who healeth all your diseases verse four who redeemeth your life from destruction who crowned thee with loving kindness and tender mercies who satisfied your mouth with good things so that your youth is renewed like the eagles then when you read verse three it says the lord executed righteousness and judgment for all that are oppressed so you can learn God by his character. You can learn God by the attributes, the things that he's doing. He made known his ways to Moses. His acts to the children of Israel. Uh -huh. The Lord is merciful. Say merciful. The Lord is gracious. Say gracious. The Lord is slow to anger. So if you come and meet me and say, Apostle, God is mad at you. And he says you will die tomorrow. I respect your prophecy, but then my understanding of the character of God, that God is slow to anger. 
there is enough time for me and God to do a discussion there is enough time for me to repent provided I am alive the understanding of the nature of God takes away fear I judge prophecy by the knowledge of the nature of God is someone learning now this is what gives you stability and maturity in the spirit if you do not know God men who act in his stead can mislead you when the prophet came and met Hezekiah he said Hezekiah I brought you a word from the Lord put your house together you will not recover from this sickness he said I respect you I know you are a great prophet but leave me and God there is something I know about him he turned his face and said God remember I know that you are a merciful God and you tied your mercy to time so that every morning it is renewed like time where did you keep the mercy and God said suddenly oh th that was what blind Bartimaeus knew he said thou son of David if it is true you are the son of David if it's true you are God then mercy is connected to you have mercy on me is someone learning now when you know God fear leaves truly it does the character of God God is not just a judgmental God waiting to destroy everybody the Bible says he knows our frame he understands that we are weak there is a healthy system of accommodation for our weakness in the economy of God with men he knows that's why the psalmist can go back to God and saying in sin and iniquity did my mother conceive me creating me a clean heart he says and renew a right spirit from within me do you know God that much do you know God that much it is inconsistent with God's ways to judge you for the mistakes of others the mistakes of your father and your father's father you see that there is a law that transgenerational iniquity can have an effect on people but you see when Jesus came he revealed that that is not God's best it is based on that knowledge you can cast that thing and say whatever happened with my father I don't have to be a victim there is something about the nature of God that can bring me out of that who seen that this man was born was it him or his father Jesus said neither but this has happened that the glory of God will be revealed hmm. when you say you're a matured Christian it's not just because of the time you have spent in church these are the things that frame your spiritual stamina you see that so when you say apostle god does not like you you become a prayer request for me i pray for you that god will bring you to a higher level of understanding if god says he's going to bless 100 people here I begin to pray for the remaining 99 because one position is taken already it says I have loved you with an everlasting love everlasting love and with my loving except you are not a Christian you have to believe this the world will bully you out of your confidence if you do not know God we live in a world today where based on where you come from who your father is or is not the social media has their own system of pulling you out of your confidence complex will destroy you as a man of God you will travel across the globe and people will look at you and they will they will they will call you by all kinds of names but not when you know him not when you know him the greatest status any man can have on earth is to be the son of God it is a very superior status I may never have a chance to be called barrister I may never have a chance to be called president of a nation I may never have a chance to be called the ambassador of a nation. I may not have any chance to be called his royal highness. But there is a status that is greater and higher than any sons of God. It says, now are we the sons of God and it does not yet appear what we shall be like. But the greatest revelation of the nature of God is found in 1 John 4, 7 to 12. Let's read together. beloved it says let us love one another for the love for love is of God watch this and everyone that loveth is born of God and knoweth God and does what 
so the ultimate measure of your knowledge of god is your love life not enlightenment the zenith of your transformation is the health of your love life not the level of your spiritual illumination there are many people who have access to mysteries but their love life is dead verse 8 he that loveth not knoweth not god read it he that loveth not knoweth not god why for god is love it's as simple as that so you love god but you hate the brethren something is wrong with that orientation the bible says that the knowledge of god at its zenith connects you to his love that means the more i know god the more i grow in the things of god the more i find myself loving him and loving his creation there are men of god who only use their members they do not love them there are politicians who only use their people they do not love them do not tell me you know god i will test your love life there are people who wish the downfall of others wish the destruction of churches wish the destruction of other people within the body no if you love jesus christ it is not in the greek and the hebrew and the rhema and whatever the bible says he that does not love god does not know god your love life must be affected this is true how do i know you are growing in the spirit i don't just look at his power the highest index for measuring love greater than every other thing the bible begins to describe the qualities of love in first corinthians 13 and it talks about all of those things love is patient love is kind love is humble are you seeing now so when the bible lists the nine gifts of the spirit is actually one manifestation love expressed in those dimensions because he gives us perspective in first corinthians 13 he says love is kind so when he says the fruit of the spirit is love joy peace no he's saying from love comes all these expressions more love more power more of you in my life more love more power more of you in my life i want you to live with this revelation god is love that means the more of god i am becoming the more of love this is why i love my name do you know that's the meaning of my name selman means the way to love what a good name what a good name how do you carry such a name and hate people no I love Jesus with all my heart and believe me I love his people with all my heart that is why I would not manipulate them that is why I would not use them for gain I love them too much I would not come and lie and deceive them and play games with them instead of telling people stop stealing stop doing all of these things just bring people to the revelation of the love of God and there are things that when the love of God is at work in you it becomes evil to do to men are we together yes so i will not come and manipulate you and just prophesy and say bring out all your money and give me there's nothing wrong in giving don't get me wrong but from a standpoint of manipulation you do not love god i don't care what tongues you are speaking you do not love god hallelujah in all your prayer you must pray that the love of god in a higher dimension be shared abroad your heart by the holy ghost because when you love the Lord, do you know, I can stay all night. If this were all night, I would have taught you something about the nature of love. There are certain realms that only lovers get to. Even prayer warriors cannot get there. Even fasting giants cannot get there. If you actually touch that realm in the spirit, it's a love affair. The Bible says, no eye has seen. Is that in your Bible? No ear has heard, neither has it come into the heart of man. What God has in store, not for everybody, for them that love him. There is a level that you love the Lord to a point where you earn another status in the spirit called the friend of God. Not everyone is a friend of God. 
and when you attain that status in the spirit part of the privileges that you enjoy is god will never do anything in a territory in a dispensation and not tell you shall i hide this from my friend abraham are we learning the nature and the character of god the result of this is confidence and freedom from fear not freedom to live carelessly not freedom to be licentious but freedom that he loves me and i'm aware that he loves me i'm aware that god loves me my goodness if you are looking for a man who is loved by god jealously loved this is one man standing before you i don't know about you but i know he loves me listen in marriage the confidence of every bride among other factors is principally derived from the awareness of the love of her husband towards her women am i right on that yes that when a woman is aware that her husband loves her so jealously there is a level of whether she's good enough or not whether she speaks well enough or not whether she's educated or not the greatest person whose love matters to her in the earth is her husband so if you as the bride of christ when you come into that knowledge of the depth of the love of that your husband because everybody is a bride in the spirit male or female you are called the bride of christ and the bible says jealousy is the rage of a man you want to see how powerful a man is touch the wife he loves not the wife he married the wife he loves so it is this awareness of god's love that gives me the confidence to know that yea do i walk through the valley of the shadow of death for me it's not a bible recitation it's been motivated by an awareness of god's love for me i shall fear no evil for thou art with me it says your rod and your staff they comfort me there are times that as i travel around the world god granting me that grace sometimes truly speaking people can send me text messages and say apostle please i just had a vision i saw you in a ghastly motor accident i saw something happening to you sometimes people reach you and say apostle i want you to pray i just saw that your name was taken to a shrine and these are these are genuine people they are not just people talking nonsense these are people who have a track record with god i know they are not lying but every time i want to fear love does not give me a chance to fear the confidence that i have is it not in your bible that he suffered no man to do them wrong he reproved kings for their sake saying touch not my anointed and do my prophets no harm the consciousness of his character his nature it's been so engraved in my heart it says all that you have given me i have kept and none is lost when you give jesus anything including your life he's a keeper he keeps faithfully but i know whom i have believed and i am persuaded that he is able to keep that which is committed he only keeps that which is committed i've handed over my life to him already i don't intend to take it back what then is the basis of my fear in fact for me to live is christ and even if i die it is still gain i have cheated life already from both ends when i pray for longevity it's not out of fear my eternity is secured already it's only that i need time because of the program of god as an expression of my love for him for giving his all when i pray for longevity is not from a standpoint of fear i have been secured in his love already the grace of our lord jesus christ the love of god and the koinonia the sharing together the participation the fellowship of the spirit paul said let it remain with you let the consciousness of the grace of our lord jesus christ let the consciousness of the love of god and the sharing the participation you have come into oneness with the spirit he says let it dwell with you can i give you number two what time do i have we have to wrap up so that we'll come back hallelujah i think i should just stop here i'll give you the remaining two 
you are not afraid of going home late again what suddenly happened to you take it down for me oh god you are my god and i will ever praise you oh god you are my god and i will ever love you oh god you are my god and i will ever follow i have sought you in the morning and i have learned to walk in your ways step by step you lead me and i will follow you all of my days step by step you lead me and i will follow you all of my days step by step he'll lead you and you will follow him all of your days listen he can lead you out of this generational causes he can lead you out of the things that kept your father down you watch your father sincere but he went down your mother went down you watch preachers around your community go down if you can follow this good shepherd he can lead you he can lead you believe me step by step he leads me and i will follow you all of my days I refuse to be confused about life and destiny the one I gave my life to is a good shepherd he does not abandon his sheep even if it is in the night the Bible says while shepherds watch their flocks even by night he does not just take care of you in the day when times are good even by night when you are confused the good shepherd is still there watching his flock by night preacher hear me there is a way out of this ministerial calamity there is a way out of this financial crisis businessman hear me you are in debt but there is something about god you need to know going around just to keep collecting loan will compound your problems believe me there is a way out there is a way out jesus said i am the way i am the door the door is the authorized access to any realm the door is the authorized access to any dimension to the dimension of wealth he is the door dimension of ministerial exploit he is the door jesus said come unto me all ye that are weary and heavy laden he says i will give you rest that is his nature he gives men rest you cannot come to him and he leaves your life in trouble even if your boat is as boisterous when he comes he brings shalom peace calm to your life I just sang my life for you when I found the nature of God it gave me rest God is mighty if he speaks it is final it is not just final because he is God it is final because he is the only God hallelujah I was teaching last week in Port Harcourt I think he was and one of the things I taught the people is that God does not have authority God only gives authority God cannot have authority because the nature of authority is that someone higher than you must give you and there is no one higher than him he has all power but not authority if God has authority there are three things that happen the moment authority comes to you one you must acknowledge an authority higher than you a person higher than you two there is jurisdiction because with authority comes limitation so when you say God has authority then you need to tell us the jurisdiction of his power and who owns the rest are we together Jesus only had authority when he became a man and submitted to God but as God he has all power and no authority it is men that have both power 
and authority because authority is the legitimacy to use power if you have power alone your use of it is illegal you must have authority to be allowed to use power so if an armed robber has gone he has power but no authority if a military man holds a gun he has power and authority that's why he does not go to jail for shooting demons have power but they do not have authority only the believer was given both power and authority <laughs> hallelujah so every time you stand to question satan don't question power question authority question authority question authority I have to stop here tomorrow we'll take the two other attributes of God and then we'll connect it to your theme because you see you cannot desire that doors be open if you do not even know the one who holds the key of David there is a mystery called the key of David that is the key that opens a door that men cannot shut. He says, I am he that was dead and now is alive and I hold the keys. You know what that keys are? That when he opens a door, there are doors that when men open, men can shut. But when the holder of the key of David opens that door, he says, no man can shut it. When he opened the prison door, no man could shut it hallelujah yes there are doors that men open and men can choose to shut it but there are doors that when he opens it remains rise up on your feet we are going to pray I want to encourage you do not miss any part of the sessions that are left because this is a build up of a thorough spiritual understanding it will cause you to be a person of stature we have examined the apostolic model for growth for stature in the spirit to have power with god and i've revealed to you through that just one of the dimensions to knowing god his character and his nature i want you to turn it into prayer before i speak over your life and say father take away fear from my life take away uncertainty from my life reveal yourself to me reveal your character afresh to me go ahead and pray someone is praying someone is praying go ahead and pray the result of knowing god's nature and character is confidence and security